Thus far in the course, we followed the same sort of progression for both sampling and physical modeling. We start with something very real, like a multi-sampled instrument, and then work our way back to more experimental applications and usages of the sampler. And then we did the same thing with physical modeling. We started with the very real in the piano tech and then worked our way back until eventually we got to the Kaivo, which is certainly much more an experimental instrument. And we're gonna do the same thing with additive. And at one time, additive was designed to be or the theory would have at least been it could get as real as possible. And so we're going to break it this down and explain to you how that is and, and also the problems with it and why ultimately multi-sampled instruments ended up being the, uh, the thing that won out as compared to, say, um, using additive techniques. So we have here a harpsichord. And I can go into my FFT analyzer, my spectrum analyzer. And when I hit a note... I can hold it like so. And the idea here is that every single um, frequency in our range of human hearing has been accounted for and is being graphed here. So from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. And you can obviously see that this works on more of like a logarithmic scale. So for example, from 8K to 10K, that's uh, 2,000 hertz being uh, represented here. That's taking up the same amount of space as from 20 up to like, you know, roughly 2K here. So um, there are some issues with trying to explain this, uh, especially when you zoom in really closely. But the idea would be, if we know all the individual sine waves that make up this sound, and that's the theory with FFT, if we could generate and we can see all of these sine waves, we should be able to then plug this into an algorithm and say, hey, analyze this sound, and I want you to generate the exact same thing using sine waves. And we could even do this manually. We could go in here and say, okay, this is 65 hertz. This is 130 hertz. This is like 196 hertz. And we could keep going up and up and up and making sine waves to represent this until we got it as perfect as possible. And we could actually do that. And as long as we have the ability to adjust amplitude, you can oftentimes get it pretty close. But there's one major flaw to this theory, and that flaw is if I hit a note, these amplitudes at each of these sine waves is not constant throughout. It's changing. You can even see it sometimes. It starts to like, this one wavers and then goes down, holds. So all of this is different throughout the entire um, duration of the note that's being played and that's really why additive is going to fail because if you uh, imagine just how much computing power would be necessary to analyze the sound at each and every like microsecond all the way through okay and ultimately that's why multi-sample libraries are much more efficient uh, especially with how computers are and how large the hard drives are this would require some kind of processor to be just um, ridiculously fast and just ridiculously accurate now there are some algorithms out there that will just analyze and focus on the first few of these sine waves and if you have a pitched instrument like we have here with the um, harpsichord what you're going to notice and see is that this does follow a little bit of a logic and this is what's referred to as the harmonic series so the harmonic series just tells us that like a string vibrates and if it's fundamental you know the lowest one is vibrating at 65 hertz we're going to find that the uh, next overtone is going to come at double that value so in this case it's at 120 uh, 65 plus 65 is what 130 or something like that it's in or around that ballpark range. And then from there, it's going to continue to be additive at that point. So 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, on and on and on. But there's a different blend and there's other things that factor into it. But if you're just able to generate the first few harmonics, the first few overtones and get the amplitude balances correct, it can be somewhat realistic. And I've seen people use algorithms and get some really close uh, sort of results. But that's not what we're going to be doing here. This video is really just here to show you the theory behind additive um, and, and how it could possibly relate to realism not to actually do it because it wouldn't really be that practical unless you're trying to go for something very simple something like a pipe organ and we'll look at that in the next video